and welcome to this bonus episode of our podcast. I'm Alex, one half of The Sober Experiment. And I'm Lisa, the other half. So Lisa, what on earth do you make of the world? (laughs) (laughs) I didn't think you'd start with something so dramatic. It's absolutely bonkers and I don't think we're on our own in thinking that it's absolutely bonkers and nobody knows what's going on, really. No, and as, like, previously... I know that I really thought that this was never going to happen. And it seems like it's been going on for ages, hasn't it? Yeah. All over the world. And then now it's hit the UK, all of a sudden, things just seem to have gone crazy. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah. Oh, I'm quite sad. I am sad. Do you know what I'm sad about? <laughs> I'm sad about, uh, like, speaking to Redemption the other day. And oh, you know, like, that's so sad. So we've had to postpone our event. Yeah, and we don't know whether postpone's the right word, really. It may be cancelled. We don't know. Um... Because they don't know. They don't know what's going to happen. You know, they don't know what's going to happen on the other side of this. And they've closed the doors to their bars for public health reasons. And obviously, depending on the economy, will determine what happens afterwards. And all we can do is pull together and hope and pray that places like Redemption can come out the other side. Oh, I do hope so. And we'll be happy, really, really happy to support them um, when when they do come out of the other side. I think that's quite important to keep focused and to keep a positive attitude there's so much negativity around yeah. and it's e- it's so easy to get attached to it and to fall into it and to be worried because people are anxious it, you know when you don't know what's going in it's ha- going on it's hard but I think it's important to keep focused on the positives yeah I found myself letting my thoughts spiral at times and I've had to just keep reminding myself you know what there's people in worse positions there's people in better positions there's a whole host of scientists that are trying to put this right yeah you know you've got to have faith in humanity at times like this haven't you yeah that's it and it is scary i think if something like this had have happened years ago especially when my children were younger and i wasn't at all financially stable yeah i'd have been in absolute bits i do not know what i'd have done because i was living paycheck to paycheck i was struggling and i think for people like that it's really really difficult and i'm just hoping and praying that you know that all the good comes out of it and people are kind to each other and sharing and they look after each other checking on one another and all you could do is live in the moment isn't it oh you know like live now and not worry about what if this happens what if that happens because the truth is we don't know what's going to happen and all we can hope and pray and really believe is that things are going to come right and they will you know this happens in cycles they will come right it just you don't know what that right will look like and i think for all of us in the sober community the word one day at a time we're we're good at this we are good come on guys we're like really good at this we can take it one day at a time and i think i love this that it's come from alex to say let's take it one day at a time the biggest like (laughs) disaster thinker (laughs) ever in the land um, I saw a post the other day actually and it said you know us with anxiety we've been waiting for this so we're all yeah. alright now we've been waiting for a world disaster we've prepared for it so now it's here we're actually dealing with it um, quite well <laughs> I saw something that said um, don't overthink this I'm like uh, excuse me do you know any other type of thinking because when you're anxious that's all you ever do is overthink everything so it's just not helpful but yeah I am staying in the moment and I'm, I know that a lot of my friends and um, contacts Contacts on Instagram and Facebook are staying in the moment and they're all pulling each other back. So in all the negative, there's a lot of positivity. There is, and I think it's very important. We've just done a video on our YouTube channel, which is a lot different from the podcast, isn't it, the yeah, videos? Yeah. So if anybody's not heard them, then please go find us on YouTube, The Sober Experiment. Yeah. But we've just done a video on staying positive in sobriety with loads of useful tips and... Because it is important and... Things to do. Just practical advice. things to do. You know, and anybody that's listening that has stopped drinking, the weekends at first seem to last forever. They do. So when people are stuck in, you know, it's going to be really, really difficult to kind of pass the time, especially with so much on social media about people stocking up on wine and not being able to cope with their families. Yeah. And what we need to do really is remember that one of the reasons, for me in particular, I stopped drinking is because 
when my family were going wild, drinking was not helping. No, that's right. Hangovers were not helping. So if you are finding that you're stuck in with um, lots of family members that might be driving you up the wall, and a drinking family member as well. Yeah, that can be hard if they've been stockpiling their own supply. Yeah, yeah and I think it's easy to kind of hide in the background and be like, well, who's going to see me? We will. Yeah, We're we'll watching. <laughs> Use alcohol only for what it's intended for, disinfection. <laughs> exactly. And you know, this is what I find crazy, is some people that I know have actually bought alcohol for this reason, yeah, you yeah. know, over 70%. Saw somebody with 100% alcohol the other day and on the, on the post somebody had gone oh if things get bad I'm coming in to your house and I'm like you know <laughs> it oh. will kill you <laughs> but this is something that I'd have said at one yeah. time I'd have probably Make a bit tra- of a joke out yeah of it. I'd have probably like tried droplet <laughs> droplets off it and it's just it isn't helpful for everybody because some people are really struggling they're not only yeah. struggling with the difficulty of the situation but with the sheer volume of what's being thrown at them and I think sometimes you know nobody's doing this deliberately you have got to think about what you were like when you were a drinker and you would have bought into it you would have posted funny things like oh I'm going to have more wine to numb this out or whatever and you'd have found memes and funny things yeah nobody's thinking I'm going to harm this person um so I I do think we all need to take that in our stride a little bit as well and realize that yeah people are making jokes it's not always appropriate it's definitely not helpful but nobody's intending to be malicious towards sober people and I really believe that I believe that as well it's not intentional at all Uh, like you said we've all done it we've been there and we're just really lucky that we're in a position now that we know that it isn't going to help and we can see the reality of it you know like yeah imagine having that clarity and that revelation that in one of the toughest times in our lives we are going to be clear we're not going to have hangovers we're going to have patience we're not going to be numbing anything out that could be good or bad (laughs) for us but you know to be there for your children because they're going to be panicking oh yeah you know I remember in like the 80s um, somebody telling me the world was going to end in 1991 or something and being scared at primary school and you forget you know children do let things run away in their minds and you're going to be there as a parent um, yeah. and this is the other thing as well when you are drinking you start to run away with what you're saying and what people don't realise is that your children are listening whether it's from a bedroom or from the other room but when you're sat around a table yeah. boozing with your mates it's easy to come up with all these ridiculous theories In jest, or, yeah as well yeah and just kind of be laughing about it but actually it can be really frightening to other people but honestly truth is Alex hand on heart I am once again so so grateful to be sober at a time like this oh, and, to, and to be surrounded by the same type of people so I think if anyone is struggling or they're triggered you know stay close to your sober groups get on our Facebook group um, ask for help if you need it talk to us and surround yourself with positive people whether that be on your social media whether it's who you allow into your house delete stuff if it's negative because it doesn't do anybody any good absolutely right i'm not going to say any more to that (laughs) what i am going to say is we've put this bonus episode together and we're releasing this just um prior to our usual episode on the weekend and we've got somebody who we believe will really inspire you to stay positive and really inspire you about self-care and we're going to be speaking now with janie lee grace so hi janie thank you so much for joining us today oh thank you so much for inviting me lovely to chat with you guys it's always a pleasure. It's just not under the best of circumstances, unfortunately, right now. Oh, no, the panic, I think, is, um, is, is everywhere. And, and I use this phrase kind of, well, they use it in a lot of coaching circles, don't they, where you talk about being on panic island. And it really does feel like that, I think. And, and oh, my goodness, it, this, this whole thing about fear being contagious, fear and panic being contagious. I mean, that's spreading faster than any virus ever will and um it's it's really really difficult for people right now it really is i think even when you go out into the supermarkets you can you can feel it can't you it's like you can just feel the panic in people Mm, yeah it's um it's a you know that that word everyone's using unprecedented we're going to get so fed up with these words aren't we I've, i've certainly never known anything like it really ever and you know it's it kind of hits at that thing that with everybody that we 
it's our basic survival instincts, isn't it? You know, um, <laughs> the stockpiling toilet roll, you know, the, ba- the basic needs. And with all of us, you know, when you feel in, it's that fight or flight mode. We are literally in, we're either going to fight real hard or we're going to flee right now. But actually the truth of it is there aren't any tigers, you know, and, um, we, we have to find another way. We absolutely have to find another way because the stress um, will deplete our immune system faster than anything anything can. We know as well that a lot of um, you know people who follow us, uh, non-drinkers, people who've been drinking for some time, let alone new sober people, are really struggling right now with maintaining that sobriety. And yeah. it, you have to think right back to the early days when there was very little external stress and how that must be feeling to those people right now. I know. And when it's, when that's your default pattern, you know, which of course it was for (laughs) us for so many years, the default position is get stressed, get angry, get fearful, any emotion, get happy. (laughs) It doesn't matter what the emotion is. Alcohol is the answer, right? So we're so used to numbing out these emotions with alcohol. And then when things are really heightened as they are now, it's completely understandable that, that that's the first thought, you know, to reach back for the drink. And that's why it incenses me by the way that I don't know if you've seen the sort of ads and the social media posts oh you know keep calm drink wine no just no just actually no I mean really if we want you know we've got a lot of new laws coming out at the moment let's have a law against that seriously let's have a law against trying to encourage people to you know have a shed load of poison um, at a time when they've got, got, got really got a lot of work to do on balancing their physical and emotional health not keep calm drink Prosecco or whatever the hell these things say. I've seen a bunch of them. They're driving me bonkers. Yeah, we've just been saying earlier that, you know, if you're going to use alcohol right now, use it for what it's meant for and disinfect. <laughs> exactly. Hand sanitizer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, you know, on a, on a, on a serious note, I think uh, uh, people just need to take a deep breath and, and, and re- recognize that the answer is never going to be, uh, you know, at the end of a, of, a, of, a, of a bottle. It really is, is, is not. And, and at this time, most people are aware that building their immunity is going to be good, whatever, whatever happens, whatever disease may or may not befall you, um, building your immune system is going to be good. And alcohol depletes your immune system big time, not to mention messes with your head and creates more anxiety and you can't sleep and it goes on and on and on. And we know this because we've been through it all. But, you know, I do really feel for people, particularly people who are just just started out on the sober journey and they were doing so well and you know and they were practicing the self-care and they were just starting to 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 break through because you know you have those early weeks when it's it is tough and then they were just breaking through and then this goddamn thing happens and they they're kind of right back to square one and they hit the fuck it button it's really really depressing (laughs) it's very very upsetting it really is it really is and I think it's important and this is what we've just been saying and why we wanted to get this episode out because if as many of us as can can get some positive and inspirational things for people to be listening to and concentrating on you know we can be in people's houses now can't we and they can be listening to all this really good advice and positivity and staying there and as much as this so many negative posts out there yeah there's a lot of positive ones as well and I think we've said it haven't we people need to stick to the groups you know these Facebook groups and the social media get rid of anything that is negative and kind of really focus on um, blinkers on yeah yeah Yeah. you have and it takes practice it's not easy because as just your human nature sees these things and you want to get angry and you want to get mad and you kind of want to get involved in it a little bit yeah yeah. So it, it is hard and it takes a lot of practice. And I know for us, we, you know, we've been sober quite a long time now and we've been practicing this a long time. So like you said, those in the early days, it can be so flipping hard, for, especially if living with a drinker. Or, yes, you know, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it, it is, it, it's difficult times. I mean, I think you're right. I think um, that people really do need to stay connected and stay close to the inspirational stuff. And by that, I don't mean everything has to be completely Pollyanna and, oh, yeah. isn't it all marvellous? Let's all, you know, play board games. Um, <laughs> you, you know, we can't, you can't do the glib thing right now. It's just not okay. But you can seek out, you know, the stuff that, 
why would you not? Well, why would you not just meditate for a while, or or or, or do some self self care, or walk in nature while we can? You know, or, or why would you not do that? Because whatever else happens, you may, you may as well be in the moment. You may as well be in this moment now, because it's all fear of what might happen. You know, what might happen? It might not. Yeah. So it's, it's so not worth damaging your immune system even further with the stress. And of course, we've got to accept that it's, it, this, this is real. This is why I think, you know, when, it, when you're trying to spread positivity, it's so difficult because you are walking this fine line, aren't you, between not being glib, you know, and, and, and I, I don't want to be the person saying, everything's fine, you know, just practice self-care and meditate, you know. It's not fine, but you do have to get yourself off that panic island as I say and you've got to reconnect come back to who you are and focus on on the good um I would say I would say avoid excessive social social media use at the moment because it's 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 scaremongering I mean actually all media at the moment is is well not all media most media is focusing only on the fear. I mean, how many good news stories have you heard on the media? How many, how many people who have been through this and recovered and are completely well? How many have you heard from? I think there was yes. one doctor. Mm. We're not hearing all of those stories. And yet there are many, and many, many. And I'm not decrying the fact that any death, any, any one single death is horrific. Um, but there's been many, 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 many recoveries. Yeah. Um, and many people who are entirely well. So, you know, it'd be nice to hear some of that. But meanwhile, let's avoid excessive social media and, and media. You know, if you're waking up and the very first thing you do when you wake up is scroll on your on your phone. I mean, it's a terrible thing to do anyway. I always re- recommend that people have a time of just just go within, let stuff settle from, from what's been going on yeah. in your subconscious mind overnight. But right now at this time, if you wake up and hit the news, what kind of a, how does that set you up for the day? I mean, whatever you're going to be doing with your day, whether you're working from home or self-isolating or staying in your bed, whatever you're doing, just give it a miss for a bit. Just, just get in touch with who you are, how you're feeling. Is the sky still there? I mean, you know, we're, we're half expecting it to fall in, right? But right now it is still there. And even the birds are singing sometimes. So just touch base with that first. Because I think that it, it is this panic. I can feel it even in myself. You know, the more, the more I switch the news on, the more I listen to the radio, the more I watch stuff, the more I see these social media posts. And then there's some article from somebody who says, actually, it's far worse than you ever knew. There's stuff they're not telling you. Mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and you can feel the panic rising. But what good does that do you? Answer, <laughs> non good. <laughs> it's just, it just does not help anything. You know, you can only, you can only be, be supportive for other people. I mean, that's ultimately what a lot of this comes down to. If there's actually nothing you can do for yourself right now, then do something for somebody else. You know, just Absolutely. some kind of act of kindness. I mean, that perhaps is the glimmer of hope that's come out of this is, is, is the way communities are coming together. And we've all seen the notes that people put through the door and I can get you shopping for you, whatever it is. So if you are in panic mode, rather than focusing on that fear, which may never happen for you, if you are currently well, then do what you can for somebody else. But focus your mind on that, you know, to do the be kind thing and the compassion thing. Because um, it, cause it gets you at, off the panic island, you know. Yeah, I read something on Facebook actually um, yesterday talking about getting off social media, but it really warmed my heart. Uh, whether it was true or not, I don't know, but I want, I'd like to think it is. And it was um, a 14-year-old boy, 14, 15-year-old boy, who somebody had witnessed taking two, the last two bags of pasta off the shelf, turning around and seeing an elderly lady looking at the pasta oh. and said, you have these, you need them more than I do. And then yeah. turned to the woman saying they've run out. And I thought, I hope that's true. I want that to be true so much. I think there's a lot of good and I think I there's do. a lot of people doing a lot of good. And again, I agree. going back to these, you know, the more negative posts and because there's so much of it, people kind of hang on to that. It's like a part of you wants to hear it. And you know, like when you said about waking up and putting the news on, we yeah. just spoke about that, hadn't mm. we? That um, I always meditate. The first thing I do when I get up is a glass of water, meditation. And the last two days, I found myself putting the news on. Yeah, I know. I had to yeah. have a word with myself and say, no, yeah. just 
pull it back, yes. reconnect yourself, let's yeah. do this because you know it helps. And yeah. walking as well, it's like I went to walk the dog and all the way up the hill, I'm thinking, well, I've done a little walk now. I could just turn around. It's like I want to go back and hear more. Oh, it's it, it, yeah, it? It's it is. It's, it's, it's contagious. It is. Fear and panic is contagious. Yeah. But, you know, so is love and compassion. <laughs> so you've just, all we can do is spin it on, our, on, on its head and, and step away when you feel yourself getting into this panic. And I've had to do this with myself. Is when you feel your heart starting to race and, the, yeah. okay, I'm starting to get panicked about this. What about my work? What about my, you know, everything? These basic human, human needs. Um, you just need to literally imagine yourself stepping away from the fear and put your hand on your heart and calm yourself down. I've, I've recorded this meditation. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link where it's a really simple little visualization, but I'm getting people to focus um, and imagine you've, you're listening to a radio, which is easy to do right now. Um, and it's got two dials and one, one is, is this, this frequency, this station, if you like, uh, panic and sirens and fear and crying and just news and just fear. And the other one is actually you can choose. You can choose to turn your dial to a higher frequency, to a different frequency that actually is is beautiful music or bird song or peace or whatever it is. Now, it's not to say that the the, the panic dial is it, still switched on because we can't pretend this isn't happening. We can't just go, ooh, la la, block our ears. It's, it is going on, but we can turn it right down and we can tune in on the, on the other side. You know, and I think that's... Link. I will, I will do, definitely. I'll attach it to this so that people can... Okay, yeah, thank you, yeah, yeah, that great. Really I mean, it's, it's, it's super simple. And, you know, again, I'm also really conscious that not everyone feels they can do meditation. I mean, for years, I've, I've, I've spoken about this before. I probably said it on your podcast, but <laughs> I, um, you know, I've been a Hay House author for years and I've also been a presenter on Hay House Radio. And there's nothing I, I can't tell you um, logically about about meditation and mindfulness and self-love. But if you'd asked me a couple of years ago whether it was true for me, I'd said, don't be ridiculous. I can't meditate. Do I love myself? It's a doubt. Because I wasn't authentic and I wasn't sort of grounded and it just, it didn't feel true for me. I was just talking about it for someone else. But all I would say is for anyone who feels, well, that's not me and I can't meditate. You know, you can sit still for three minutes. <laughs> that's the start right? Just sit still for three minutes and, and, and put an audio on. I mean, that's, that's enough to start with. You don't have to be cross-legged in a, on a cushion with a candle for a full 25 minutes twice a day. I mean, great I if you that. can. Yeah, sit that's what Lisa does. Like, and I do. I well, well, then I bow to you. <laughs> but some of us need to start small, you know, and that's okay. And I'm one of them. I would, you know, I really value your meditation. Myself yeah, cool. Because okay. I find it incredibly difficult because as we discussed previously and on your podcast, um, my mind does not shut up. It is literally like a constant debate. So I really struggle to sit quietly yeah. for myself. Yeah. I think yeah. that's a lot of people think that when you do meditation, that's what you have to do. But you yeah. have are there, are there? You, it's, it's yet another one of those things that we say we should do it and if we can't do it right we won't do it at all you know yeah. and, and 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 yet it actually we can be much kinder to ourselves you know hashtag be self-kind and and yeah. just give ourselves a break and just put a timer on for five minutes three minutes five minutes that's a start then you can build it up you know i mean i, I wish somebody told me that years and years ago rather than <laughs> needing to take so long for me to do anything but you know i can catch up now we'll We'll all have lots of time on our hands, won't we, allegedly? Oh, we're going to have loads of time to do lots of things like that. <laughs> yeah, and this is what another thing we were discussing, like, you know, in early sobriety, time is so much yeah. different um, yeah, and it just definitely. go on forever. And I'm very conscious at the moment that somebody newly sober, or back with all this time on the hands after being sober for quite a period of time, they've yep. got to find practical things to do with their hands. Yeah, totally. So I, th I think you're absolutely right. And I, I think this, th this highlights even more, as you say, it shines a light even more on the stuff that we would recommend anyway that people do when they, when they first start to ditch the booze is, is focus on other stuff, you know, and sometimes I suggest people think back to, to what they used to enjoy as a child because most of us have forgotten. And sometimes people will go, do you know what? I used to love painting or playing cards or whatever, or, or, or um, you know, sewing or knitting. All these things are fantastic. For, I mean, basically anything with an ing at the end of it. That's an action. <laughs> 
I mean, not drinking, <laughs> right? But the good ings, right? You know, the sewing, the singing, the dancing, uh, the walking, obviously, um, scrapbooking, collaging, cooking, baking, all of those things are actually fantastic for your well-being. They're wonderful acts of self-care um and if you if you can get into some of that if you've got a little bit more time on your hands remember back to how that used to feel and the first time you do it it'll feel really weird because if you if all you're used to doing is going and 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 you know having uh, drinks of an evening then suddenly time does stretch in front of you so if you are holed up or or you've chosen you know not to drink then then make a list of all these things that you used to love doing and if you can't think of anything then sort some photos out and create a, a gratitude wall or, or, or it wasn't it was Simon Chapel wasn't it I saw that lovely post that Simon Chapel did where he'd created a gratitude wall I'm always telling people to do vision boards you know and, and think oh, what, yeah. is, what is it they want oh. but actually right now vision boards feel quite hard to do oh because yeah yeah everyone's so uncertain that you don't even put a picture of, of I don't know, a, a job or a holiday or a, anything because it just all feels so, you feel so nervous, you feel so nervous about everything. But a gratitude board is a fantastic idea because you can just mm-hmm. literally write and cut out images of what you're grateful for, um, as well as gratitude lists. And that's just such a simple thing it, that, that anyone can do with their hands. We've all got photos or access to magazines. We've all got a pen. You know, it, everyone can do that. Literally everyone. And think how good that's going to make you feel just to create this stuff and maybe share it with other people and get them to share 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 theirs really i think that's yeah. such a good idea because like you said the vision boards even without all this going on i found it so difficult to do a vision board when you actually you. sat there and thinking what do i really want well it's exactly it's harder isn't it than, yeah. than realize yeah. so gratitude and this is something we speak about a lot isn't it gratitude and and it can you know it can start really small and the more you do it the more you start to be grateful for don't you and i know yeah no, people do talk about that a lot, but it's so true, and I love that the idea yeah. of board for. Yeah, I like it. Something a bit visual, and something that you can when you're starting to go back into that overthinking zone, you can pull yeah. yourself back to the moment and look. Ah, that's actually what I'm grateful for right yeah. now. And that's it's something yeah. the family can get involved in as exactly. well. Exactly. I mean, it's a lovely thing for kids to do. I mean, yeah. you know, because that is another thing within all of this is I really feel for the way children are being panicked about this I mean oh my god you have to reassure your kids that they're safe that's the most I mean that's that's trauma to a child to not feel safe they need to know that they're that they that they're safe and 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 at the moment when adults don't feel safe that's that message is all being passed on it's it's really difficult so actually holding up with a with with kids and and creating pictures of things that you're grateful for I mean you know it's not a bad thing to do is it for anybody um but i think these little things at this time these little things you know whether it's decluttering your house something that i've never managed to get around to doing um you know um all of that all of that stuff is is is, is going to be good it's just focusing on this little acts of self-care or what you can do for, for 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 other people really i mean i always used to say you know years ago um i had a, a family member with um really serious mental health um issues and and, and it wouldn't matter what, it used to really frustrate me because whatever I said to her, um, for her to do for herself, she, I didn't understand at the time. I think I've got more of an understanding now, but at the time it used to really frustrate me because I'd say, well, read a book or, you know, watch it, watch this comedy or do that. And she, no, couldn't just couldn't do it. Had, didn't have the wherewithal to do that at all. It was just not possible with the depression. And then, um, it, something happened, I forget what, but but someone near where she lived um, had an accident and couldn't uh, get out of his home. And she heard, I don't know how, that he needed a newspaper. So she went and bought a newspaper for him. The simplest thing. Yeah. Changed everything. You know, just that tiny little act of kindness for someone else. So if you really can't do anything for yourself, you can do something tiny for someone else. 
It's so important, isn't it, to teach resilience as well right now because, you know, children, this can set patterns for life. If we allow children to start panicking and, like you say, experience real trauma at this point now, this is patterns that later in life come back. And I know that firsthand. You know, it develops and creates anxiety, depression, stress, all of those things. And it's a really good opportunity if we're looking for the positives to sort of sit down with your children and show them coping mechanisms and show them alternatives and and it can really teach some good lessons yeah it's so true it really is if only this stuff were taught in school you know how to look at your emotions sit with your emotions actually notice your thoughts and 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 then once you've noticed it rather than going off in the fight or flight mode actually ask well is that actually true is that is that really true is that definite or is that just a thought? You know, we all have, I forget the number, but someone worked it out scientifically, didn't they? How many thousands of thoughts you have every day. <laughs> you know? and, and by the way, loads of them are the same thoughts you know, every single day. But then there are also literally, literally thousands of these thoughts that we have every day that just come in and go. Yeah. They just come in, they go out, you know, obviously, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to function if we were, if we were, no, if we were <laughs> noticing everything, you know, I'm, I'm just about to put my foot on the floor. I need to think about whether, it, you know, I'll go through the floor. You know, most things we don't think about, do we consciously? Then we just get on and do the thoughts, just come in and then they go. But a lot of the negative thoughts come in and they stick. Yeah. They stick. And, and they're like Velcro. And we, and we catch on to these negative thoughts, particularly if everyone around us is having the same thoughts Absolutely. and talking about those thoughts. But actually, it just takes you to actually be able to pause and just take that off and pull that Velcro away and, and, and actually ask, is that true? You know, am I actually safe right now? You know, I am. We are. We are safe. We, we are okay. Yeah, we're probably in one of the safest places in the world right now. Exactly. And, you know, we've got enough food. I mean, I know it sometimes feels like the pasta's gone and the loo roll's gone. Well, you know, tell that to my grandma. It would have probably used newspaper. (laughs) You know, there's a lot of very resilient people. Um, And and again, you know, I need to underpin this by saying I'm not making light of this because it's going to be people with underlying health conditions who really are terrified at the moment. And also, you know, that is the other thing that really scares me in all of this. What about everyone with all the other illnesses they've got? I I mean, what, what is going on? I heard someone this morning say that she needed to get pick up a prescription um, for her for her husband with a health condition he's had for many years the surgery is closed just yeah. closed says ring 111 what the hell what about everything else you know it's it's just not the right response it's just that just can't be the right response for me but you know as I say um, I, I'm really aware that the that, that that I'm not trying to be flippant but I do think for those of us who can and there are many of us you know the biggest percentage of us in the UK can actually think positive thoughts be kind reassure our kids you know and 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 do what we can for other people and focus on good stuff and building our own immunity and spreading some of that love instead of fear that's what we can focus on yeah we've also got to focus really hard on the people that are making this possible you know we've got the cleaning staff in the hospitals in the schools we've got the teachers who are just going in putting their own families at risk you know we've got the nurses the doctors the health visitors the, the the midwives there's so many people who are actually just getting on with it yeah. No, absolutely. They really are. They really are. I mean, we need more and more and more of these good, good stories, don't we? we do, um, yeah. As each day passes, you know, that's what we need more of. And, and, and definitely, you know, not, not this stupid memes about, turn, you know, drinking will solve it. <laughs> I really no, hate that. <laughs> oh. Looking back, and we'd said this earlier, hadn't we? These memes and things like that are something that I would have shared at one I'm time. Not. And, I, and oh, I, don't know. I don't think, um, I think you said I it said before. It earlier, yeah. 
that people are necessarily doing this on purpose, but it's it's all that they know. It, it is. No, it, it is. You're right. Aware of what they're doing and realising the impact that these things are having on people. I remember me and my friend Katie used to pass um, a meme to each other and it was of a lady saying how much she was pouring a bottle of wine and it was literally just a head appearing. We laughed about it for years. Mm-hmm. It come up like a long time and it come up on my time hop like a few months ago and I was like what was I thinking why did I not know I know I know I, well you know you've I'm sure you've heard me say this so many times but I you know I when I think back relatively bright people you know, yeah. <laughs> relatively bright people were all being duped by this it's an illusion and this, this this I wrote a blog post about this but the emperor isn't actually wearing any clothes and yet we have all all of us globally, you know, such a massive percentage of people have fallen under this ridiculous spell and illusion that 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 that, we, that alcohol drinking alcohol is normal, and and it's not normal. It's absolutely not normal. It's not the right thing to do. It's not normal, and you can just all you can do is pray for the day that more and more. I mean, it's happening. Of course, it's happening, and that's brilliant. But won't it be amazing when it's just as normal to not drink as it is to drink because we're not going to eliminate it of course we're not but it needs to be a situation where it's not what you don't drink it's just perfectly normal some people choose to some people don't end of and there's loads of choices available for everyone um and and you know if that were to happen if it were normalized completely normalized to be sober then um you're not going to have that ridiculous stigma either because that drives exactly. me bonkers, you know. It drives me absolutely bonkers. <laughs> yeah, we're working so hard on it by going into the workplaces. I know. That's great that you do that. Yeah, and it is. We're really working on removing that stigma, whether it be – we say it a lot, don't we, but when people are normalising it so much, um, you know, they might be pregnant and not want to tell people. They might yeah. – being addiction, you never ever know, and I think no. it's so frustrating. And I can't wait when people tell me now they don't drink. I get so excited yeah, by it. I'm like, <laughs> yes, a normal person. But it's happening, yeah. happening more and more, isn't it? More and more people yeah. saying, "No, I don't drink," and I'm proud to say it. And you know, yeah. that's the difference. There's no kind of. Sh- I've heard very few people now going, "I don't drink." No, it's a. I don't drink. I choose not to drink, and it's yeah. in quite a strong, positive way. So it is changing. You're right; it's definitely changing. Yeah, I just hope this current thing doesn't set that back at all. You know, that's my hope. Oh, I know it's. Worrying, I know it is quite it? worrying. What was it that triggered you to stop drinking? Just so out. I, I had. Um, been I mean uh, overdoing it for years and years and years but no one would ever know um w- would have ever known I was you know um high bottomed as that lovely phrase says I wish <laughs> uh, you know I was um, a gray area drinker as we now know the, the the phrase um so I was drinking too much but nobody else would know I had a problem at all um but I knew and I was waking up at 3 a.m. you know um every single day um hating myself and I was working and well still still am in sort of recommending holistic living and skincare without chemicals and good nutrition and all the stuff that I talk about all the time. And yet there was this part of me that just did not fit. And the voice in my head at 3 a.m. would say, you know, what are you, what are you actually doing? This does not fit with who you are. This has to stop. You have to stop putting this poison in your body. This is terrible. Stop. You know, and it would be so strong, so strong every single day. But then by six o'clock the next evening, you know, as I say in my TED talk, you know, the wine which had flown in and then it was a different voice saying, oh, go on. Oh, and have a nice sovereign on. You deserve it. You, you've worked so hard. You're such a busy mum. You deserve a treat. You know all that nonsense. Um, so it went on for years like that, literally years. And looking back, I, I, I realised that I now know that the reason it took so long was because I didn't know how to do it because I didn't know there was anyone else like me. Yeah. I genuinely thought that I was the only person who felt like that because we're told by society that there's two types of drinkers. There's those at rock bottom who need to go to AA or rehab or medication. Well, that clearly wasn't me. And there's everybody else. And everybody else is just a happy social drinker. And if you're one of the losers who can't hold your beer, well, you know, hard luck. But basically everyone's good. So I didn't think there was anyone else like me who had those kind of thoughts and who could just choose to ditch the booze. Um, 
so, and and that's why what's this is so what's so brilliant about the work that we're all doing now is we can keep sharing, keep sharing. Yes, it is a spectrum, and you probably are somewhere on that spectrum. And for God's sake, get off before you hit the bottom, right? Um, and then the catalyst for me, I'm, I'm sure you've heard me say before, was that I um, I work at, uh, on BBC Radio Two, and we interview authors and celebs and stuff. And usually when we have an author coming in, we're given their book the night before. So we just kind of skim it. But it was Christmas 2017. And I was given Claire Pooley's book, uh, The Sober Diaries, to read over Christmas. I mean, that's unheard of. I never get books for like a week and a half before the author comes in. So I looked at this book, you know, and the producer said, oh, can you read this over the Christmas break? You know, you've got loads of time. It's called The Sober Diaries. Right. Okay. I think that might be a sign. Oh God. And then of course I read it and it was so relatable. You know, she was just like me, you know, a busy mom and caning it and on the surface fine, but not fine. And, and, and all of that stuff. And it, 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 I just thought, well, this is, this, this is me. The, the, the real key though, was that in that book, not only did she detail, um, you know, the need to ditch the booze, the, the, how, how she did it, you know, and the fact that it was tough, but importantly, she got to the other bit, you know, that I call it the catching sight of how much better life is. Yeah. I'd never, no one else had ever, I'd never ever thought about that. I'd only ever thought of not drinking as a terrible goddamn hardship and why would I want that for myself you know that misery of being a boring go- person and then, no it's just I'm not going to do that so she set set this little glimmer of hope in me that I had never heard of before ever never even thought about it before didn't know it was possible um so I stopped on New Year's Eve it's good a time as any <laughs> um and initially my plan was just to stop for dry January just in in honor of meeting Claire and, and yeah. stuff but then, of course, I, you know, I never look look back. That's amazing. And are you quite good friends with Claire now? Do you? Keep- I am now. Yeah. I mean, she. I mean, I think I'm sure I've told you as well that I didn't tell anyone. I was so ashamed. And again, this is just the most bizarre thing. And I really hope with all the work that you guys are doing, I'm doing, lots of other people are doing, we can knock that on its head. I don't want anyone else to ever feel how I did then. But people do feel it. They feel ashamed. I mean, what the hell was it? Why was I ashamed? to have stopped drinking, but I was. So I didn't tell anyone, not even my family. I didn't tell anyone. It was, it was amusing when I think back, you know, I was sort of getting bottles of wine from my kids for Mother's Day and God knows what. I didn't tell anyone. I mean, on the one hand, it shows how easy, in inverted commas, yeah. it is. Because I didn't, clearly didn't make a fuss, did I? I just got on with it. Internally, yeah. it was all kicking off and I felt like hell. But I just got on with it. Well, I didn't tell anyone. So if people said, do you want a drink? Yeah, thanks. I'll have a sparkling water or I just got on with it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but Claire was the only person I told. And so she would support me, bless her heart. I'd send her an email and say, I, I don't know whether this happened to you, but I'm so weepy Aww. and I'm this one. I can't sleep. And I've got this weird thing going on. I've got leg cramps. I mean, all these weird things that happen to you that <laughs> no one tells you about. Like, what is that about? I can't sleep because I've got leg cramps or I've got this one. I've got, I've got stomach aches, Claire, and I'm on week <laughs> six. What am I, what's going on? And she'd, she'd just write these very comfortable, oh, don't worry, sweetie. That's all part of it, you know. And, and then, you know, she'd say, oh, you, you've hit the wall, sweetie. Don't worry, you'll come through. <laughs> so I'm very grateful to her. Yeah. I just, uh, spoke to her a couple of weeks back and she, her episode will be out soon. So this is oh, good. a bit of um, a prelude to it, if you like. So <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. And you stayed friends from that day. So is that how you actually met Claire as well at that interview? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I hadn't met her before. So, um, yeah, so that, I, I mean, obviously her book was the, the first that I read. And then, of course, I went on and read many others. I, I loved The Unexpected Joy of Being Sober. I mean, just it's right there in the title, isn't it? You, don't, you almost need nothing else. Yeah, <laughs> that's, your, that's your podcast right there. There is an unexpected joy of being sober. That's it. That's it. That's my TED talk. You know, sobriety rocks. Who knew? You know, that's the title of my TED talk. You actually almost need nothing else. But anyway, uh, I read that and then I went on to read. I mean, literally hundreds. I mean, I could do it. I could do. You know what? I should, shouldn't I? To do mastermind on Quitlet. Yeah, <laughs> the only thing I'd ever win on. <laughs> there isn't anything I haven't read. And trust me. <laughs> oh, I just want to take back what you said then about being ashamed in the early days. Yeah. I think it's something that everybody actually who does stop drinking does go through. I remember my, I 
think I told you on the last podcast, but my mum's sober now. And she has a friend that goes round every Saturday night. And she can't even believe now that she did it. But at first, she was fully debating to put non-alcoholic wine in a wine bottle so a friend wouldn't know mm. because she would so like... Cause yeah, she I've done that. I've done that. Yeah, I did that. But like you said, now it's crazy. <laughs> I know, it is crazy. It's just like, what were we doing? It's not the shame of sobriety, is it? It's the shame. It, this is how I felt. It's the shame that other people must think you were an alcoholic. You were, you, exactly, that's, that's exactly it. It's, a, it's, it's what are people going to say when you tell them? Well, in fact, they do say, don't they? They say, oh dear, did yeah. it get that bad? I'll Someone said to me, oh, how long was it? How long is it? And I said something like, oh, three months. Said, oh, have you dried out now? <laughs> you know I was never in a skip <laughs> it's, it's, but, but other people's reactions you know leave it with them you know and you just need to be who you are in all of this you just got to leave their thing with them that's all you can do but, but you're right this goddamn shame this sober shaming as yeah. it's called um, it will get less though I really believe that the more the more of us there are, the more people spread these positive and the stronger you are in your sort of authenticity about it. So it's that not floundering, isn't it? Don't, if you are going out to meet friends in the early days, don't do that. Oh, um, well, actually, I'm not really drinking and you know, I'm not, because they'll steam in and oh, just have one. Oh, but if absolutely. you're really strong and solid, well, I've chosen not to drink, I'd like a, or even don't even discuss it, just as I did for the first three months. Just yeah. say, what you, say what you want to drink. It happens not to be alcohol. I mean, how the word drink, which means a liquid, can have been changed to mean alcohol, I've no bloody idea. It's the same with wine glasses. It drives me mad. I want to start a campaign to change the name. Why should a, a receptacle be named after a poison that goes in it? I love it. I, want, I still want a nice glass to have my drink from. Why do I have to call it a wine glass? Why? It's crazy. I've done this. When I've gone out and gone out with friends and they're drinking gin and tonics and it comes in this beautiful glass with all the fruit and the ice and it <laughs> looks really nice and then you ask for a tonic water or you get your whatever and you get a little <laughs> stubby glass and it absolutely riles me because I've always had lovely glasses and yeah. I like lovely glasses. You challenge and, it though, don't you? Oh, I always... Yeah, so do I. Absolutely. Abs yeah. Always. I always, always say I want exactly all of that all that, you know, pit, yeah. pit, pit, play, no alcohol. What, you know, I mean, th there's this lovely expression, keep the ritual, change the ingredients. We yes. do yeah. that, that ritual, don't we? I don't want a warm orange juice in a paper cup just because I'm not drinking alcohol. No. I still want a lovely glass. I want whatever I'm drinking to be chilled and grown up and lovely and not full of sugar and crap. So yeah. I'll keep that ritual of having a lovely drink if I choose. But yeah change what's in it you know absolutely and I think at first when I used to do it I'd, I'd go to the bar and I'd be like can you make it look like a gin and tonic because I don't want them to know that I'm not drinking and, and now I'm like can I have a lovely glass as well just that I don't yes. need to excuse it or say anything else it's like just yeah. give me a nice glass <laughs> Yeah, exactly. My dad um, was an alcoholic, and he, and I say that because um, he used to say I'm an alcoholic, so he was quite comfortable with that term. Um, mm. And he was sober for ten years before he passed away. And it was really, I mean, this is twenty years ago was when he went sober, and then it was really unheard of. You think it's yeah, unheard of now. yeah. And he used to get quite a lot of stick. You know, he'd spent all his his life going out into bars, and if he even ordered, you know. Um, I think he drank the Erdinger non-alcoholic beer mm -hmm. and, and often yeah. they'd just pour it in a half glass and he'd say, hang on. And he was really, really firm. He'd say, I'll have two of them and you'll pour yeah. me a pint. And he yeah. used to just be, you'll give me what I'm used to just because it's not got alcohol and does not mean that I can't enjoy myself. And yeah. it, I guess I've kind of followed suit with that now. So even though yeah. I don't um, associate myself as being alcoholic, I think, well, you know what? I am what he was, which is sober and proud. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and the, you know, the catering industry has got to catch up with this. You know, pubs, clubs, bars, they've got to catch up. Yeah. Workplace dues, I mean, you're going into the workplace. A lot of this really comes to the fore. I mean, because pubs are getting a lot better, or, or bars, yeah. certainly in the, in the South, but uh, are, are a lot better. And we know there are, there are dry bars and there are places popping up and all of that's great. But still, I find that if I go to a function, um, you know, I was speaking at an exhibition a, a, a while ago, albeit a health one, and, and afterwards you go for the drinks reception and it's literally your red wine, your white wine, your 
beer. And for the non-drinkers, if you're lucky, it's your warm orange juice, if you're lucky. Often it's nothing. And, you know, and, and, the, and I know it's, there are all the issues here because it's their suppliers, it's, it's the supply chain. I, I get that, but that's got to change. And I remember having a conversation with one organizer who was going to be doing an event. And I, I raised this point and they basically sort of said, well, you know, we can't do it. We've got the budget and it's the, the caterers, they'll only supply this. And for the non-drinkers, they'll only supply the crappy orange juice or whatever, the warm orange juice. And shock. And I actually said, okay, so, so here, here, here's the thing then. Let's supposing that by some amazing uh, magical fluke, I was able to come to your function and I was able to bring with me Russell Brand and Zoe Ball and Kim Kardashian and, and Zac Efron and, and Brad Pitt, you know, and I could go on and on and on. And they all walk in, you're going to serve them crap orange juice. Good for I you. Mean, I don't think so. I don't think you'll be doing that. I think you'll be saying, oh God, what do you want? What do you want? Shall I get you some lovely kombucha or alcohol-free sparkling or an amazing artisan botanical in a lovely glass? I think, I think they'd pull it out of the bag, wouldn't they? They yeah, absolutely would. <laughs> I'm actually going to a wedding in the summer and um, on the, it was an online menu and you have to state your dietary requirements. And for the mm. first time ever, I actually wrote in the dietary requirements. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. But be careful because they will interpret that as meaning you want you know, at, at best an alcohol-free cocktail. So you want to specify exactly what you want. I would, I would actually write back and say my dietary requirements are that I want champagne. I want a toast at the same time as everyone else has champagne. Yeah. And I would like an alcohol-free sparkling uh, wine. I, I'm very happy to make recommendations for you if you don't already have a... <laughs> I might just do that. No, 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 definitely. No, I will do that. Yeah, you should. Yeah. The more and more people do that, it is a dietary requirement. I mean, yeah, if you think how, how veganism was, even just three years ago, you yeah. know, now it would be unheard of for a restaurant not to have a vegan, vegan options, wouldn't it? Yeah, unheard of. definitely. You know, it would be unheard of for a coffee shop not to have plant-based milk. Yeah. And, that was, and that's only changed in the last few years. It should be exactly the same. The more of us that consider this a dietary requirement, not, not just you can palm me off with the crappy soft drink. I don't want that. You know, I want something just as lovely as everyone else yes. without the poison. <laughs> My um, eldest daughter works part time in a restaurant bar, and they've since she's worked there, they've got now got a vegan option because I'm vegan. Yeah. And they've um, she came home the other day and she was like, "Mum, I've got them to get loads of mini bottles of non alcoholic prosecco." And I was like, yeah. "Amazing! Oh, that's brilliant! That's oh, yeah, brilliant. she's really um, she was really chuffed about it." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, things are changing. It's it, you know it, it's definitely on an upward upward curve, but but there is also a danger. You know, I'm also aware of this that because you know you guys and and, and the work that I do, we're kind of steeped in this all the time, yeah. and you do have to remind yourself. I I'm back in the real world <laughs> several times a week. Yeah. Um, not everybody feels the same way, right? And when yeah. you see all these stupid ads that we've already mentioned, it brings it back to you. Actually, okay, you know, so things are starting to change. But there's still a hell of a long way to go, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely a long, long way to go. Before we go, um, Janie, can I just ask you, you've, well, I've read it, your book, your little book, tell, because I think that'll be a really good little thing that people can do. It's quick, it's yeah. easy to read, and also, um, what other things that you're doing at the moment and where can people find you? Yeah. So, well, probably the best thing, if someone wants a little, just a little boost of inspiration, the, um, the TEDx talk is the, is the, you know, the thing I'm most proud of, really. It was great fun. I was so nervous. I've been speaking for years, really? doing public speaking for years. Oh, God, I was so nervous. Literally consumed every thinking moment, you know, waking moment for months. But anyway, oh, um, so... Uh, I Oh, God, it's so terrifying. Anyway, so that's called Sobriety Rocks Who Knew. So you can find that on, on YouTube and it's 12, 13 minutes, you know. So hopefully um, that's a little inspirational boost and it's quite fun if you haven't seen it. Um, and then, yeah, the book, uh, it's only an e-booklet. It's really tiny and, uh, and I wanted to make it completely free, but Kindle wouldn't let me. So it has to be 99p. So I apologize. But anyway, it's 99p. And it's just a little booklet. So, sorry, say again. 
worth what? 99p of anybody's money though I've read yeah oh well, thank you I mean it's literally a little e-booklet that's called Goodbye Wine Witch and it's just it's just a bit of fun with a few tips in there that that you know might help you recognize that this is just your own thoughts coming in and you can you can challenge it um, and then obviously I run the Sober Club which is a, a membership site so there is a little monthly fee um but it is an amazing group if anyone's interested in looking at the holistic picture. Because what we do there, there is an online course called Get the Buzz Without the Booze. So that helps you work through all the mindset stuff and, and everything from day one if you so choose. Mm-hmm. But also, you know, I've got people in the Sober Club who've, who are on day one and then people are on year four or five or six. Because what it's really about is all the what's next. That's what I wanted to focus on because of my background and the work that I do. I realized that for so many people, when they've overcome that first hurdle and they're three months in, four months in, five months in, suddenly the world opens up to them and they start thinking, okay, now I'm going to change my diet or now I might do yoga or I'm going to try meditation or I'm going to really think about self-love or I'm going to perhaps look at relationships or their, their whole career changes. The amount of people I've met who are suddenly feeling brave. I love that expression, alcohol steals your joy and being sober makes you brave. And people find that they suddenly have the resilience and the energy to start a new job or start a business or form a charity or travel the world. Well, not at the moment, clearly. Um, you know, or, uh, or write the book they've always wanted to write. You can do that while you're holding up. Yeah. Um, so that's what we do in the Sober Club is we, it, it really is the holistic living um, picture. It just happens to be underpinned um, by the sobriety. So yeah, so it's, it's, it's a great way for me to kind of um, bang on about all the things that I, that I am passionate about. We're doing a, a little kind of um, uh, ditch the chemicals challenge in the, in the sober club. So we really genuinely will be looking at how you can make your own skincare. And oh, we did a little self, yeah, we did a juicing challenge and a self-love challenge. And, and, and so it really is the everything. And of course, not everyone wants to do everything, but I do find it amazing that when you, must, you guys must have found, have found that your, your, everything has expanded and I don't mean around the waistline but your everything expands your life gets so much bigger when you stop yeah, drinking don't you think it's, it's I'm sure. full of at yeah. first it's yeah empty life oh yeah, yeah. And then yeah. All of but a sudden, then you put in the bits you want to put in yeah. don't you and you put them yeah. back in as well and I think you were saying that earlier you know things that you've forgotten that you did and you enjoyed come back if you want them yeah. and yeah. It, no, it really is. It's so much more fulfilling life without alcohol. And yeah. if you've got a community like yours, like ours as well. It yeah. Can get your inspiration from others if you haven't got any yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, these kind of communities can help people through when, when you get those wobbles, when you're on that panic island. You know, we've had people in the group who are perfectly rational and, and, and very uh, solid in their sobriety. And then they'll hit something like one woman was at an airport um, and, and she does regular long haul flights in, in business class uh, for the work that she does. So the default position is, well, you get on a flight, you drink, you know, clearly it's 7 a.m. Why would you not drink? in an airport you know I know it seems bizarre even saying that now on account of are we are we ever going to do that again but anyway yeah. um so you know there she was and, and all of a sudden this sort of this the inner voice comes in and and the, there's a little inner toddler you know saying why can't I have what I've always had you know? and, and and it's this sort of default position and you know we had to kind of talk her down um because she she didn't want to drink yeah. of course she didn't want to drink but the the urge to do what you've always done is so strong and she just needed a reminder from you know absolutely everybody saying play it forward and remember it's just your little inner toddler give it a cuddle and say, it's all right it's all right sweetie you can have something else have a fizzy drink and have some extra you know dark chocolate or whatever it is and of course actually the end result is she has an incredible flight no jet lag because who knew it's alcohol that makes you feel shit when you arrive oh, not, the, not the jet lag it's the alcohol i think you'll find <laughs> I'm in my first flight and actually it's like like you say your vision even opens up and when you get to the other side yeah and for me it was like the first time I'd been in a foreign country and got yeah with that first ever with sober it. holiday <laughs> I was just you've just made me think then and I've only just realized it thank you um when I went to New York and I was pregnant with my youngest and obviously not drinking I was the only one who didn't have jet lag. You're <laughs> absolutely right. I know, you don't. You don't. I didn't even realise that. I've Dave. just learned something new. 
Yeah. Oh, I think it's so lovely to have that community because not only would you have all helped that lady at the time, there'll be people in the background yeah. reading that post and the next day, exactly. you know, yeah. come up to something like yeah. that. They've got yeah. it all there, haven't they? Yeah. Totally, yeah, yeah. There's a real power of in, in in that connection, I think, and and they're the things that I always recommend for everybody at the beginning is is you know immerse yourself in the Quitlet, um, you know, really, really immerse yourself in or, or podcasts or whatever it is, but immerse yourself in that sort of inspiration and knowledge. Both, I think, are really important, um, and and at the same time get yourself connected, feel, feel part of, of some kind of tribe and community. It's, it's, it's really so critical. Um, uh, you know, I mean, now more than ever, really, that you've, that, that you've got that support, I think. Um, and you can share how you're really feeling because chances are someone else will have been there, done it, you know. Um, and I think it's lovely as well that people who have been sober for a long time still want to be part of, of, of things like the Sober Club because it's that thing of giving back, isn't it? And, yeah. and, and not that they don't have different challenges. It's quite interesting because um, one woman in, my, in the Sober Club has done, gone back and done my, my online course, Get the Buzz Without the Booze. Um, I, I do say you can use it for anything, as it were. It doesn't have to be for alcohol. Obviously, I've named alcohol, but yeah. actually the principles apply. And it's been really interesting because she sort of went back, worked through the course with a completely different um, habit that she wants to change in her mind. And the same principles apply because, you know, we can all work on something else, can't we? And, yeah. and the really amazing thing is that it doesn't matter what you do after ditching the booze, everything will be easier. Everything's I easier than that. It <laughs> doesn't matter what else you try to do, you know, if you need to give up smoking, if you need to lose weight, if you need to ditch your terrible relationship problems, you know, it'll, everything will be easier if you've ditched the booze. And it's the hardest thing. more ruthless, so it's easy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you become more authentic with who you are, don't you? So you know what you want. Yeah, you, you know tolerate you less of the things you don't want. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I used to be scared to... Um, to uh, if if I wasn't sure about something, I didn't always used to totally voice my feelings um, with people very close to me. Partly because I was I was kind of had this feeling of being unsure myself. There was a bit of insecurity, yeah. um, and and that awful phrase that uh, that you, you you kind of hear or might still say about people that's the wine talking. Yeah, that awful phrase. Oh my God, what a sense of shame I feel when I even think of that phrase. So it meant that if something felt really important to me, I didn't always own it and stand up for myself yeah. because part of me was afraid that maybe I'm not right. Yeah. Um, I don't take any of that crap now. It's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely no way. Do it. I'll tell you what makes you a so much better parent though, doesn't it? Oh, oh shit. Yeah. That's a whole new podcast. So much better. Pet. I mean, isn't that an old new podcast? I mean, we'll you're, save that for our next there, <laughs> you're present for your kids, but you don't take any crap. Yeah. Don't take any crap anymore. Fair. But quietly, yeah, exactly. Quietly, get on with it. Don't take any crap. Don't care if I'm not your best friend. Hey, that's where it is. But it, it, you so come from a deep space. At the beginning when I stopped, um, my teenagers, they didn't like it. No, I can imagine that. Interesting, because they thought, like, you're not such a pushover anymore. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. And I remember them saying, you've changed. <laughs> yes, yeah. for the better, sweetie. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And yet, you know, they will, I mean, this, the, again, this really is another whole podcast, but this thing of modeling your behavior for your kids, I mean, I mean, this is one I'm navigating because you can't, say to teenagers you must never drink how very dare you you know you, you can't can you it's not going to work at all but you just have to hope that they're going to see something of the light somehow <laughs> I don't know I um, I some of it's got to rub off I think yeah I think it makes a huge difference and I've said this a few times but the difference between maybe how hey, my eldest sees and uses alcohol compared to how hey, my 14 year old looks at it and she can kind of see now and she'll look and go well how did they need that like we went to an Ed Sheeran concert and it was amazing we had a lovely time it was a an outside one everybody had been out all day and it were some people that were definitely worse Aware, and it was kind of interesting for my daughter to look and be like, "They're just missing this. It's so amazing." Yeah. 
so fun yeah. and these people in front of us just can't see it and I know. It was a great real, lesson for her though it was it was a real mm. eye opener for her and I remember knowing then I was like thank thank god I stopped I and then I did because she can see the difference. Yeah, God, I think back. I think back to some gigs I, I went to, and I, I can I can barely remember them. The first concert you go to, um, you know, sober. Oh God, it's amazing! Like, literally, the world is in Technicolor all of a sudden. Glorious Technicolor all of a sudden. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I, I think the sober world is in glorious Technicolor, and that's what we yeah. need to cross and maintain this positivity amongst the sober community. Support them through this difficult time, and yeah. let's carry on inspiring other people. You know what? They've got loads of time on their hands now. They're going to be at home. Try sober. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, yes, completely. You'll have more energy. You'll sleep better. You're doing something great for your for your future, and your anxiety will be less. Yeah, you know? it is a great exactly. time to be sober and to I try it into, yeah definitely and we'll put on your links Janie as well yeah. so great you thank you. you and access some of that because if you are at home and you want to try an online course there we go Janie yeah. has one yeah oh it's so lovely to chat to you guys great thank fun you. always well, is. always a pleasure well done you with all the amazing work you're doing it's lovely and you thank you so much for coming on we've really enjoyed it and I think it'll really help a lot of people so thank you Janie thanks a lot appreciate it alright we'll see you soon bye 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 bye